Hello, and welcome back to Farming Matters. So today I am really excited to be joined by Nathan Schof. Hey, Nathan. <laughs> he is our special guest from um, Indiana, and he's here to share a little bit about creating youth leaders in sustainable urban agriculture. So I would be remiss if I don't also celebrate Marie Flanagan, our North Central SARE Communications Program coordinator, as well as the producer of the show. Hey, Marie. Hi. <laughs> so, Welcome, Nathan. Thank you. So Nate, this is a, a, like a little bit of a slight variation on our Farming Matters theme, but it also it's all about supporting and engaging our future farmers and existing farmers in sustainable agriculture practices. And Nathan is going to share about his a little bit about his work and his journey working with um, youth leaders in urban areas um, in Indiana. So Nathan, tell tell us more. Like what what got you going on this project and sure. how did it shake out? No, oh, no, thank 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 you guys for having me here today. And um, yeah, I wanted to. It's been a really exciting project to work on. If any of you are familiar with the youth education grants, it's a relatively low. Um, you know, funding funding amount relative relative to many other SARE grants and many other grants folks might be interested in. But I think um, when I, I just started an extension in 2019, and one of my colleagues, Alexander Pettigrew, had had a really great relationship and had a had a deep interest in youth engagement and youth education, um, and had been working with Esther Bekele from Feligi Haiwa, who's our project partner, and had mentioned. Um, a lot of the students she was working with were interested in the kind of the topic of sustainable ag, ways to be um, maybe to you know grow produce for you know locally for for themselves, but also a lot of the residents that live in the neighborhood. And so we we were talking about other projects focused on composting, soil health, all these different topics, and we're aiming for um, some research and education projects, partnership grants, and we kind of felt like well, maybe we should take some of these ideas and and try to fit them into the youth education grant, because to our knowledge, many people weren't really applying for those. Those limitations in terms of funding kind of became, um, I'd say, kind of positive challenges for us. Like we look at, well, we don't have a lot of funds to you know, print materials or maybe buy a lot of supplies and resources, but I think we can do quite a bit with what we have. And we we have a lot of connections in, in these different um, communities and folks that can you know really elevate the project. But more importantly, we had a lot of really engaged youth, uh, engaged youth that were involved in, in at the Fleegate Highway Center, so we felt like we had all the, kind of a really good recipe to to you know put this together and a lot of excitement. And so I yeah I really have to give a lot of credit to Alex and Astaire for being kind of the impetus behind this, and me kind of being new in my role and learning a lot from them and being just fortunate to to work with them. So how did you like start? Because sometimes it's like oh my gosh I have this idea, we know there's a definite need and interest from youth, how, like. How, what, what was what a little bit about your process with this project? That, that's a really, really great question. I think is that that I feel like we were thinking statewide initially. We were looking at all these other projects and thinking that composting was coming up as a, a topic of interest or of concern with a lot of urban producers, urban farmers, and not mainly distribution, looking at ways to re, kind of aggregate, you know, aggregate resources like they know people are buying from different places or actually many times they're buying from the same, same, you know, producers, but they were paying really heavy transportation fee, you know, very expensive costs associated with getting those, those inputs from one point to another. So we were thinking initially about maybe this would be more of a like composting project. And we're, you know, looking at different, different resources for that. But then we started to think, well, there are a lot of youth that are interested in, agriculture, you know, different, different aspects of it. And, and Alex was the one who mentioned, you know, maybe the, um, there are a lot of curriculums that she had experienced teaching, like uh, Learn, Grow, Eat, Go, uh, Junior Master Gardener, things like that, that could kind of fit into, we could kind of maybe take some of these composting lessons. And a lot of, we noticed too, a lot of different farms, at least in Indianapolis, I know in Gary, um, Fort Wayne had composting on site. That was a big part of the educational focus too, was Having more of a holistic approach to agriculture, so we kind of felt like, well, that could be a you know a kind of points of focus on, and then we started to look at you know the budget for for this grant. We started to inch, lean into this. We realized you know, we feasibly couldn't do two sites and do everything we wanted to do, and having that relationship that she that Alex has built with Astaire really felt like that's a, a great site to do it. And it, Astaire has a really um, a background in chemistry is a great, amazing educator. We really felt like, you know, she's a great leader in the community too. 
that she would be just a wonderful person to work with and would, you know, really know how to help us, you know, supplement things we wanted to do, but bring a lot of knowledge to the project. So I feel like we did, we had a lot of good pieces there. Um, also want to mention Kevin Allison from the Soil Water Conservation District. He's been a partner with Extension for many years, worked with a lot of folks at Purdue. And he, you know, he was willing to come um, do some hands-on training, do some different virtual training too. So we, we felt like we had some good, you know, really good pieces together to, um, you know, move the project forward if we were funded. So you did some of the background. What was it like to like, how did the youth sort of receive receive the project? Were they just like, oh, well, here, what's the extension or what's going on? Or like, <laughs> what was that like? What I found interesting too, and I think this kind of, it goes, goes off the, theme of the project, but there was just a lot of listening involved and, and, and letting youth kind of talk through and tell some stories about themselves and what they'd like to learn. Like what, you know, what is it, you know, we, can, we can explain what we want to do with the project, but uh, within that kind of framework, what is it you guys want to get out of this? What are skills that you feel like you're currently lacking? Um, what's, you know, what's of interest to people? We, we got a, a lot of responses. That was one of the, actually the first times we can meet in person prior to the pandemic. And we had we had a really really great conversation with the students there. And what did the youth want to get out of it? So a lot of them mentioned like wanting wanting to develop leadership skills. It was one thing that came up over and over. Um, many of them said that, that one thing that came up. And I, I remember a few students saying something along the lines of, "Well, I, I want if I if I want to be involved in farming or or you know I want I want to be able to do this maybe for a living. Like what are what are some angles I could explore that could do that. Like, and the you know, folks mentioned everything from hydroponics to, um, you know, farm management, a lot of, it was kind of all over the board, but I think that um, they could see that in front of them, there were, there were raised beds, there's a high tunnel there. And at the time there, there's some uh, livestock there too. There are a lot of different thing, different uh, pieces of agriculture that we could focus on and, and build off of. So I think that's where, we we're kind of highlighting that each one of these things provides a learning opportunity and kind of could can really maybe get them there too and, and focus on that. And again, like aside from this project, there's so much happening there on a daily basis that a lot of the students are already kind of bought into the the momentum and the you know curriculum and the emphasis and the focus of that that um, project partner. So we had that we re fortunately we had that benefit too. Um, but they're they're also there are some successful urban farms in that area that we can point to that, you know, hey, that what you're talking about doing is actually being done, you know, in, in your area, but by, by by folks like you. So I think that was a nice thing to be able to refer to and highlight at times. But I think um, when we got down in some of the nitty gritty pieces and topics, like we could talk about soil health and that's one thing we leaned into it with, but within that, we kind of asked people like, what do you know about it? Um, what does that mean to you? And we got a lot of different responses and some things that like, you know, they want to learn about nutrient management. They, they, you know, things that you, maybe I didn't expect youth to mention, but maybe it's more common than I thought were like, they didn't want to contribute to nutrient leaching. They wanted to have uh, beneficial insects. They wanted to, you know, really foster that. Um, I would say more of like an organic management approach to farming. And so I think it was interesting to hear all this. And most of the students seem to really buy into that. Um, one thing that came up over and over is wanting to know where their food was from, like really wanting to have a hands-on experience, understand that I grew this, I, you know, I, I fertilized it, I managed it, I, I was, you know, watering these plants, and I was responsible for producing, you know, creating healthy produce that fed them and their families and other folks in their neighborhood. But these were all really impactful things, I think, for us to hear and and things for us to think about when we were when we were scoping out this project. So to the youth, did some of the parents end up inheriting some pet chickens? Because I know like backyard chickens was a topic or the, like that way I had to draw the line there in the apartment or I don't not know. That, not that I'm aware of and that. Okay. They did, but the, I will say that a lot of youth were really interested in, um, in you know, kind of the, you know, chick either, either, production of eggs and um, health benefits of that. That's one thing that came up, but also like almost more the composting piece of, you know, the chicken coop and the different staging areas and, and those things. It's, you know, they can have a very holistic approach there at the, at the center too. So um, that's an integrated part of all this too. So I think it's really, it was really helpful that we have that 
at that site too, to kind of have this, we can move from one area to the other and teach, teach so many different things. And it's right there. It's hands-on. So, but yeah, I'm hopeful, uh, not that I'm aware of, I don't think anybody had to take any chickens home for that. So currently youth educator grants are offered at $6,000. Hmm. Um, what are your thoughts about uh, youth educators going after a grant at that amount? And what are the benefits of, of that level of funding? That's that's a good question um, because I think I think it's a good opportunity because if you're new to extension or maybe um, you know new to to writing grants, it's a I think it's a very approachable grant or you know in process. I think it's a it's a and it can really be impactful. But I think I would encourage more people to maybe aim for them too and to 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 pursue them because I think as you know I, I mentioned here right, there, there's a lot that you want to accomplish, or you kind of maybe compare it to other projects you're working on that have much more funding available. And you you sometimes run the risk of trying to do more than you can do with the dollar amount you have. But I also think that it it those limitations can kind of create some really um, creative opportunities because you have to work with what you got and, and find ways to be, um, you know, do things affordably and timely and um, within the scope of the project. So I think it's a good, way for people to learn if they're new and, and use that maybe as an opportunity to feel out an idea or a concept and then build it, build upon that for a bigger grant, which is what we did. What's been happening since, since this project for you or like, or that's kind of a bad question, way to ask the question. Um, <laughs> what's next? What would you continue to do more of? <laughs> um, well, so in, interestingly, like when I was working on this project, there was another uh, research and education grant I was working with, with um, a colleague here in our horticulture and landscape architecture program, Dr. Catherine Orvis. Uh, we had been working on that project in Gary and um, they've been serving at a co-PI on that. And then when she found out that Alex and I and um, Esther had got this youth education grant and and Catherine is, um, leads a junior master gardener program, has a long history of, of uh, working with youth. She was really interested in building upon that. And so uh, we submitted for a research and education grant with the same project partner and we're recently funded that, uh, that project was recently funded. So we're kind of building upon that youth leadership component, youth entrepreneurship going with that theme. And then we, you know, we've got more opportunity and more funding to have more resources to do more on-site, hands-on experiential learning. And so, and we, you know, we're in an era now where we can do that again too. So that, that I think is a, has already been a great opportunity to do that. And she, you know, she was very intentional about learning what we did, how we did it, um, you know, factoring that into that grant. Cause we knew if, if we were funded, there was gonna be some overlap there to have something to make sure that we weren't duplicating efforts. And um, yeah, but really building upon that and take, you know, trying to take it to another level, so to speak, I guess you could say. So um, and again, having the willingness of um, the project partner, Esther, who I mentioned before, she, has a long history of working with extension, working with all these people I've mentioned. So um, making sure, you know, that she had the capacity for this and um, the willingness to want to do it. And she did. And so I, you know, I think we've been very fortunate. So that will start year two of that project will start this summer with the, with the educational pieces. So we're really looking forward to that. Thank you. Well, I am inspired and blown away and just how, how this momentum keeps carrying for, you know, carrying you forward and just, I'll you know, just really appreciate your, your time and just being really generous with sharing what you learned and like like giving some voice to what the youth learned on the ground and what's going on in your community and just good stuff all around with the soil and the soul. I want to say I, I got to say thank you to Sarah again for the flexibility and you know during the pandemic and being willing to extend the project and let you know letting us revise the budget and there was you know there was a lot of travel um to get you know to be there from drive from campus to be on site and to you know be present and I, but i think it was really impactful um but yeah overall i think it was a lot like i, I mentioned before just a lot of un, un, unanticipated interactions and um questions from folks that i haven't really found with other projects in, in, in a good way i think it's been really fun because um just that you know, i get a random email from someone hey i heard about this project so and so told me about it um, tell me more. And that's a great opportunity, I feel like, to talk about our project partner and what, you know, what they're doing. Um, but also to hopefully that gives someone some 
you know, ideas or maybe more confidence to apply for the for a grant like this on their own.